What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Sci-Fi Bookery. Today, I want to talk about this one right here. This is Ice World by Hal Clement from 1953. Probably not the best of his work, but we'll get into that. I still really liked it, so I encourage you to follow along with this review. Um, even though maybe it's not for everybody. I liked it. It was it was quaint and quirky and it was fun. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. So Ice World is a first contact story which is very common through the 50s and 60s was that first contact with aliens kind of stuff first encounter um, stories like that so this one is no different but what makes it different is it's told from the opposite perspective so we follow along with this alien named salmon ken and salmon ken who they just refer to as ken uh, for most of the book we don't know that he's an alien it starts out, it sounds like it's going to be this great detective story where this is uh, Salmon Ken works for the Narcotics Bureau and he's on the hunt of this drug lord who's importing drugs into their world. And we don't know that he's an alien until randomly on like the 18th page or something like that, it mentions that he reached out his tentacle. And I was like, hold up, what? Where did it ever say that he was not human? Like, I just assumed it was a human tracking an alien who was importing drugs. No, in fact, it is this alien from a planet called Sar, which we then, you know, later on find out is an alien planet that's extremely hot. So these creatures are used to extreme hot temperatures. Um, so an ice world would be kind of weird for them, right? Well, it turns out... And spoiler alert here, um, but I mean, the book was written in 1953. I guess if you want to read it, it's still good. This is really not a huge spoiler that's going to blow apart the whole book because it's literally on the cover. The ice world is Earth. So check this out. So the thing is, to them, Earth is extremely cold. To us, it's temperate. You know, it's a beautiful day out right now. Um, to us, Earth is temperate and it's good for human life. But for these aliens that are from Sar, which is an extremely hot planet, um, where most metals are actually liquid, and in the book they talk about that, and I'll get into the, the science part of this science fiction book, but from a really hot planet, Earth seemed to be an ice world. And we find that out very early, in the, literally the second chapter of the book would find that out. So it's not really a huge spoiler and it'll help me to describe the book a little bit better and help people understand it and decide if they want to read it or not. So getting back to the tentacle thing, there's very little description. In fact, the, the drawing on the cover isn't even an accurate description of the aliens in the book, which I think is really funny because when was this? I don't know what the, the publication date was on that. It was 19, uh, 1977, so somebody must have redrawn that or something like that. They got Earth right, but the alien is the... It doesn't look like the aliens that I am at least envisioning in my head based on Clement's description. So the descriptions are extremely vague in this book of pretty much everything, but he describes things as like something else. So he'll describe, you know, tentacle-like arms and and um, frog-like eyes and stuff like that. It'll describe as like something else, which is a very common trope. I mean, it's something that helps the reader to understand, which is not a big problem. But in this one, it's a little bit confusing because it really doesn't physically describe a lot of stuff. And then some things he over-describes. So there's these torpedoes that they send down to Earth. And again, this was the 50s, so it was like torpedoes and warheads and stuff were like the high technology. We'll get into technology in a minute. But they would send the torpedoes down to Earth and they have stuff in them, which are different uh, precious metals or other items that, that the Sar, um, Sarians, they don't actually refer to them in any way like that, but I guess I'll call them Sarians, um, find important. So they send it down to Earth and the Earthlings put stuff in it and it sends back. And this is going on for like 30 years. Well, the torpedoes are so overly described where you could you could picture the torpedo no problem. Whereas the aliens and landscapes on Earth and stuff like that, you're kind of piecing together. So, of course, you know, every reader is going to have it a little bit differently in their head. Not a problem. Again, kind of a hallmark of 50 sci-fi is the less description. There were some writers that really over-described, but 
Hal Clement is really good with this, leaving things up to the imagination um, in this book. So when we find out that the drugs are being imported from the from Earth, then the whole thing changes where Ken wants to get to Earth to see what's going on. And it's more out of curiosity because he's a scientist as well as a federal agent. Um, and he wants to check this out. He wants to see what this ice world is all about. And that is so interesting. So the whole story is kind of meh. It's not amazing. I like that it's like a first contact story told from the opposite perspective. But the thing that most excited me about the story was Ken when he would go out on his own on his little scientific adventures and his interaction with Earth and his interaction with the humans. It's really interesting. And I like that a lot. Um, what I found was la was lacking, or at least was problematic, was that this book is very sciencey. It gets into a lot of different uh, metals and compounds and, and things like that. Um, and they talk about the way that different metals react to different tests. And there's lots and tons and tons of tests. Like, it's not a very big book. Like, half of that is them running tests. So it gets a little boring. Um, but the science is sound, which is kind of cool. Like most sci-fi, it's like, hey, let's imagine these crazy things that happen and make it really weird and all kinds of like outlandish scientific things that don't make sense, hence science fiction. This is actual science fact in this book, which is super cool, I thought. Um, and it's sort of a testament to Hal Clement and the way that he went about researching books is that all the science in here is sound like this is real science in this book um it's normal like everyday earth science but it is science which is cool and chemistry and stuff like that it's just it's like like seventh grade chemistry but it's real so it's kind of cool it, it gives it more of a um this could happen sort of feel but the technology on the other hand that's totally different. So more than a few times they mention vacuum tubes, which I did talk about this in another video and someone commented that they actually do use vacuum tubes in space travel because they're more reliable than modern, you know, uh, computer chips and boards and things like that. So they do use vacuum tubes like on the International Space Station, their monitors are vacuum tubes. Well, in this book, they talk about vacuum tubes not being able to withstand the cold temperatures and high pressure of space. So that's not true. That's, that part's not true. But this was 1953. They hadn't put a TV into space yet. Another thing that they mentioned, too, is the length of microphone cables um, and the length of speaker cables and portable speakers that would need to be plugged into a power source, like not even battery operated stuff. And this is the aliens that we're talking about that are supposed to have this super immense high technology. They were limited by the length of a microphone cord, but they had this rocket, this torpedo that they called it, that was on remote and you could pull it around with you, but the remote was on a cable. Like one of those old school remote control cars that you had to walk behind because it was on a, on a cord. That's alien technology, you know, far beyond the reaches of human imagination is a, you know, Kmart remote control car. So that part, I got a little lost in, in the weeds in those parts because I'm like that. I never pictured aliens as using cords, like they could control things with their minds or or just crazy technology where they could just wave their hand and something over there would move. Like that's the kind of stuff I have pictured with alien tech, not corded remote control missiles. Like that is just a very strange thing. Um, but it didn't detract from my enjoyment of the book. It's still a really fun story. The ending of the book comes pretty abruptly. It's, um, it just sort of ends, but it ends in this very romanticized way. And I kind of liked it. it. It ended in a way that you could imagine the story continuing. It's really a, a beautiful story of 
two worlds communicating and interacting with each other in a fully peaceful manner, even though there's multiple altercations that are not peaceful, it shows that the individuals involved can be peaceful. And I love that idea. You know, this was such a, like a 50s thought, you know, here is like, we can all get along if we do our part. And there's plenty of villains in this book. There's lots of twists and turns, which was really fun. Um, lots of this like kind of space opera sort of stuff, which I thought it was a space opera to begin with. I remember mentioning in a video before when I started reading this book that it was like a detective space opera. So far, it's definitely a space opera. Absolutely not. It totally wasn't. There's, there's elements of that, but overall, it's a really touching story about society and about the relationships that that we have with each other and how those relationships can lead to a more peaceful existence and i liked it i really liked it it's a quick read um like i said it's it's 200 pages but the way hal clement writes in such a an approachable way it's a quick read and i would recommend it if you're looking for something kind of light um, not su it's not hardcore science fiction. It's like I said, like seventh grade earth science and chemistry is in there. Um, but mostly it's about relationships and the twist in it is super nice. You don't get a lot of that stuff anymore in modern sci-fi is a story that's just kind of lighthearted, but then it's got an awesome twist and a great, um, sensibility about it. So that is... Ice World by Hal Clement, 1953, recommended by the Sci-Fi Bookery. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.